Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf Kang. Greetings to the world. Okay, now recently I made a video response to someone called True Empiricism who believed that they debunked Aces experience, Matt Dillahunty, and his understanding of the argument from design. And now he's made a response to my video, Real Empiricism, where he invokes the same logical fallacies that I debunked in my Real Empiricism video. So now I'm making up part two real empiricism where hopefully he'll get it this time so let's begin all right now there are many flaws in what you just said right now uh, the first thing that i noticed what you were talking about was about uh, a system put in place that allows this to happen that allows uh, life and plants to happen and, uh, and so forth um, uh, so photosynthesis and all that well <laughs> of course there is a system in place that's not what the question is the question is that what best explains this system that is in place? The attributes that we find inside of this system in place, uh, what knowledge do we have of them to where they come from? And you said something else about the patterns uh, that we find in nature. And the well, look, let's just stop there. Um, okay, the reason we understand how plants occur naturally and how they essentially have a natural explanation is because everything within observable reality is of the natural world. It's understood by, um, it has physical laws and it's understood through science, reason, and experience, which is how we understand that things that are of natural phenomena, like plants, have natural explanations. This includes the photosynthesis, gathering energy from the sun, CO2, which allows it to grow. All this is essentially conducted by, um, and it's this is all done through inductive reasoning. Okay? Patterns that we find out of nature. This is how we can tell the difference between um, what is designed and what isn't. Well, what do you do when you find the exact same attributes uh, in nature that you find from things that we know that are designed, like laptops and computers and motors and such, so forth like that? What do you do with that? You know what? You got me. You, you really got me. I don't know. Wait! I know! We understand how th we understand <laughs> yeah. we we understand that things like computers, laptops, modems. We understand the design because we can go back based on the empirical data for them, like their signatures go back to the companies to help make and design them, the blueprints necessary to help help make them possible. Okay, that is that's the essential difference to how we understand what is artificially designed to what occurs naturally. Because everything that occurs naturally is based on the physical laws and it's understood through the methodologies that I just mentioned. As opposed to do things that are artificially designed because that's essentially based on empirical knowledge. Unfortunately for you, this does not this does not apply to your God, because the reason we understand paintings of painters is because we see them being painted. We have that experience. We don't have any experience of them coming about on their own or through a supernatural creator. So, bad logic. On what grounds do you say that can be objectively measured for me and everybody else to know that everything in nature isn't designed? Empirical data and everything I just mentioned, so there you go. Here's your problem. What you're talking about is subjective. And, you know, if you see, uh, uh, you know, somebody in a cloud or a car in a cloud or something like that, uh, this is you. I might see something else, or the next person might see something else out of that. Um, what I am telling you is objective. Whenever you come across information or language, which is DNA, and I'm going to hit on that later. <gasps> oh man, I, I think I had a dream where you said something totally ridiculous, like DNA being like a language. Oh wait, you did. <laughs> and the thing is, it's not. It's DNA is not a language. A language occurs between two minds, like us speaking English right now. 
okay? DNA is chemical interactions which follow the laws of nature, okay? It occurs on the biological and cellular level and occurs naturally. This is different from a language which is developed by thinking minds, okay? And if you're going to say, and if you're going to say that, the, if you're going to say, if you're honestly going to make a, a false analogy like that, then we're done, okay? It is not, th those are non-comparable things. You can't invent to God just by, just by saying that DNA is, is like a language. It's not. It is a biological thing that occurs naturally, which is different from a language which is based on thinking minds, okay? And, you know, I'm, I'm essentially done on at this point because, you know, you, you, you invoke the same things I've already debunked. I'm only going to focus on two other things in this vid that you mentioned. Okay, now, you mentioned the conditions of uh, the Miller-Urey experiment and how, and how that model was, uh, was a bit inaccurate at the time. Well, the, the intention of the Miller-Urey experiment was to observe if abiogenesis could have taken place under the circumstances then believed to represent the early Earth. The result, after passing an electrical discharge through an atmosphere made up mostly of methane, ammonia, water, and elemental hydrogen was a water soup of various amino acids and a few other recognizable biomolecules. Now, I'm glad you were honest enough to say that it did produce amino acids. I will agree with you that the state of understanding of earlier chemistry has changed somewhat since then. Uh, more or less, uh, nitrogen, carbon dioxide atmosphere is now considered more likely than what Miller and Urey did in their experiment. But even though the Miller-Urex conditions are no longer widely accepted, the experiment did successfully prove that life can come from non-life. Now, and, and, it is, and it is science whether you agree to it or not, as far as the scientific community is concerned. And speaking of the scientific community, you also uh, talked about various scientists such as Richard Dawkins, Stephen Hawking, and others, and how their scientific research apparently links all of the knowledge that we've accumulated to a 21st century god. And not so much. Because scientists use this thing called scientific naturalism where they limit their research to the study of natural causes because any attempt to correlate something that happens within reality to something that's supposedly supernatural is never fruitful. At least the creation of scientific dead ends and God that gaps hypotheses, which is what you were trying to make essentially in your first and second vid. However, this lacks predictive power in a great in a great sense. It has zero capability. It is a poor model. Therefore, scientists focus on what they can observe and test because that does have predictive power. You can learn from that, and that's what helped make modern civilization possible through physical evidence and reason logic, the essence of the scientific method. Indeed, modern civilization, with its planes, its ample food, its modern medicine, its laptops, computers, and the internet, and videos where we can refute others when, when they're wrong, is really just a monument to the efficiency of this methodology. And it is all built on godless mathematics. Okay, um, that, that's pretty much the end of the vid. Now, if, if you want to continue this discussion, uh, we, we could do Skype if you want. I heard you had some issues regarding uh, your, your second vid that it, it would have been more preferable, so we can continue that because I, I pretty much, dude, I, I've already made this clear to you in, in the last vid, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to make another other vid to you on this. This is, this is essentially it. If you, if you, if you can't get it now, I, I don't think you'll ever will, Okay which is ironic given your name true empiricism because being an empirical rationalist you could always learn from evidence and reason and I've given it so there we go alright uh, this is Wolf King peace out real empiricism part two